are studying uh, digital frequency meter. Uh, so far, we have seen that a frequency meter is nothing but a counter. Okay. It is basically a counter. And uh, you give the input signal uh, to the clock of this counter. It can be uh, either positive edge trigger or negative edge trigger. Okay. Uh, but if the input is not um, uh, square or rectangular, then you have to first uh, convert it into a square or rectangular uh, wave. So, you can use a Smith trigger. Okay. So, this is a Smith trigger. So, you give the input first to the Smith trigger and you feed the output uh, here, uh, but you can also use the AND gate, so that you have a flexibility to stop the counting at some point by making say this input G of this AND gate equal to uh, 0, you can stop passing the input from here to here, so the counting will stop. Okay. So, this is the input this can be a sine wave or anything. Here we have a square wave and th this will come. Then, then uh, okay, we may need a reset. Input to reset uh, the counter value to all 0 before we uh, start counting. Okay. So, this is the basic scheme. Now, uh, let us talk about time period me measurement. Okay. So, previously we have talked about frequency measurement. Okay, where uh, we count uh, the edges of the input or the receipt input edges uh, of input signal for a predefined time. And that predefined time is controlled by this gate signal. Okay. So, here you give a signal like this, which is 1 for some time and then it is 0. Okay. So, this is the interval where the counting occurs. So, this is this predefined time, which we call the gate time. Okay. So, let me write gate time. So, this predefined time is called gate time, you can also call is as counting time. Okay. So, we count this signal or the pulses of this signal within this gate time. Now, let us talk about time, uh, time period measurement. Okay. This is also called reciprocal counting. Okay. So, this is also called reciprocal counting. Why? Because uh, firstly, you know that time period is reciprocal of frequency. Okay. So, time period is 1 over frequency. So, that is why it is called reciprocal uh, counting. And what do we do here? We will count the number of cycles
of a known frequency signal or a reference signal of a reference signal reference square wave within one cycle of input signal ok. So, here we count the uh, ok let us write cycles in frequency measurement we count the number of cycles of input signal within a predefined time and here instead of counting the input signal we count uh, another signal a reference signal with known frequency ok. So, we count another uh, different reference signal within one time period of the input signal ok. So, reference square wave uh, with known frequency ok. So, let me draw the two things side by side to make it more clear. So, normal counting versus reciprocal counting ok. So, in this case we measure uh, frequency frequency measurement and here we measure time period ok. So, what we do we have in either cases we have two signals here this is say input signal ok and we so this this is input and we have another signal which you call the gate or g this is on for a time and then it's off okay, or like this okay in this case you count the number of cycles of this signal within this uh, one cycle or half cycle of this gate signal ok. So, count input cycles within one gate pulse I mean gate uh, cycle or uh, uh, gate time whatever you call which is this ok. So, this is gate time So, within this you count the number. So, in this case the count is how much? So, starting from here I have 1 cycle, 2 cycle ok. So, roughly so I have 2 cycles of input signal within this. Now, I need to know this gate time ok. Gate time is known so therefore, I can write this frequency f is equal to the count which is 2 divided by gate time gate time ok. If say gate time is equal to uh, let us take this is equal to uh, half second or say 2 second or say half second ok. In this case count is equal to 2 1 2. So, count is equal to 2. So, frequency will be 2 by half this is same as 4 hertz ok. This is normal counting 
and what do we do in reciprocal counting in reciprocal counting let this be the input signal this is input okay we will have a reference signal which is of much higher frequency and known frequency like this okay say its frequency is known or its so its time period is known so say time period is equal to t r r for reference okay so this reference signal has a time period of t r and we will count the number of these cycles within say this time okay so this is counting time and here say we have 1 2 3 4 roughly uh four cycles of the reference signal within this half cycle of the input signal okay so that means this time okay so this time is how much uh if i call this t okay then t i can write this is equal to four times tr okay 1 2 3 4 so this is equal to 4 uh so 1 2 3 4 it's slightly less than 4 it's not complete cycle okay or maybe yeah okay so and what will be the time period of the input signal so for this so input time period is therefore equal to 8 times tr assuming that the duty cycle is 50 50 that means this is 50% of the total uh, period the period is from here to here so this is the so from uh, this is one time period right and if uh, so if this if we assume that uh duty cycle 50% that means this time is same as this time so if i have four counts here so i will have obviously four counts here so then i can say okay the time period is 8 tr where tr is the known time period of the reference signal okay so this is the difference between normal counting and in reciprocal counting in normal counting we count the input signal within our uh within the on time of gate signal and here we count the reference signal within this uh on time of input signal okay opposite okay that's why it's called reciprocal counting and uh, okay you may ask what if the input signal is not of uh, 50% duty cycle okay so this is a small interesting question uh if input signal doesn't have uh, 50% duty cycle okay it's like this say long on time and short of time okay so then we cannot simply multiply by a factor of 2 and get the time period okay so what can we do the trick is simple then you take this input signal and pass it through a flip a uh, flip flop like this so like a, let's take a t flip flop with toggle set to 1 and here you give the input 
to the enable. Okay. So, so, this signal you give this input you give to the enable. Now, what will happen? How the output will look like? The output q q will change every at every rising edge right this is a positive edge triggered flip flop so at every rising edge q will change so if i draw q here on the same axis okay so say q will change from 0 to 1 here at this rising edge then it will change here at the next rising edge. So, q will change like this 1 0 like and so on. Okay. So, this is q this is input. So, now you see the on time of q is same as the time period of the input signal. Okay. So, this is time period of input signal. Okay. So, for one time period it will remain on and for the next time period it will remain off. Okay. So, it is like this. Okay. So, therefore, if I use this q as and measure the number of reference cycles. Okay, so, if this is my reference signal which should be of much higher frequency. So, now you count the number of reference signals within this time. Okay. So, how many do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, count is equal to 5. Okay. And if this time period is T r, this is reference time period, then input time period is how much? Same as this, which is same as 5 counts of the reference signal. So, 5 times tier. Okay. So, we can use a flip flop like this uh, before, before this uh, input. I, I mean, so this input will be passed through this flip flop and then we can use it. Okay. So, in this case, if I draw it schematically, so I will have this counter. and it will have this reset input to make it 0 initially and of course, this clock this is most important, but now it will count not the input signal, it will count the reference signal. Okay. So, here so I will have this reference signal. this is the reference signal reference square wave of much higher frequency than the input signal which will come here. But uh, you have to have the mechanism of stopping it. So, I need this AND gate. Okay. So, I put this AND gate here and the other input of the AND gate will decide how long or for what duration the counting should continue. Here, I will give the input signal. Okay. Maybe not directly, maybe through this uh, flip flop. So, q uh, let me draw it like this q T, this is T which is set to level 1 always and here I will give the input to the clock. 
this will be the input signal and okay uh, if you have an input which is not rectangular you may also need schematically drawing a smith trigger before this okay so you give the input here which can be a square uh, non square wave like this and this is also you see not half wave symmetric. So, therefore, after this mid trigger we will we'll have uh, a waveform here which will look like possibly this. Okay. And after this we will have a waveform which will be like this. This time if it is call it T, this is same as the time period here. So, this, this is one time period, this is T, which is same as one time period here, this will also be T. Okay. So, you give first you make the input to a rectangular one, then you can use this flip flop and then within one period of the input, you count the number of cycles of this reference signal. This is how it works. So, this is reciprocal counting. very much similar to the normal counting. The only difference is the role of the input and the reference is reversed. Okay. So, here we are counting the reference signal within one period of the uh, input and in normal counting, here we are counting this is the input recept, we are counting the input signal within one period of the gate signal. So, this two have is to change their roles in normal and reciprocal counting. Okay. Now, let us talk a bit about the errors that we may encounter in frequency measurement. There are normally two sources of errors that I can think of. So, two reasons of error. Okay. Uh, number one, so how do we measure say frequency? Say in normal counting, so consider normal counting only. Okay. So, we measure the number of input cycles within one gate time and this gate time is known to us right we need to know this gate time but say if we do not know this gate time precisely then what will happen we are measuring frequency uh, with this expression right count by gate time number of cycles by gate time but if gate time is not known precisely say we know this gate time to be half second, but say it is actually 0.49 second. In that case, we will have an error, right. So, and this gate, gate signal is, gen, is, is uh, normally uh, generated from a clock generator. Okay. So, we can have like a uh, crystal oscillator. from which uh, we can after that this we can have a frequency divider say this is this crystal oscillator has a frequency of 1 megahertz that means the time period is 1 microsecond which is too small now i can i'll talk about frequency divider later separately 
So say the task of this frequency divider is to simply divide the frequency of this signal. Okay. Uh, say if this is 1 uh, megahertz, it may bring it down to say 1 hertz. Therefore, this time period, uh, so the time period of the gate signal will be 1 second. Okay. Then this time will be half second. Okay. But if this crystal oscillator is not oscillating at 1 megahertz, but it is oscillating at a frequency of 1.00001 megahertz, then this time will also not be half second, it will be somewhat less than that. So, therefore, we will have an error. Okay. So, if the crystal oscillator or the, the clock generator, whatever you call uh, clock generator frequency is erroneous. So, this could be one reason, but normally crystal oscillators are uh, quite precise, uh, they are uh, the errors may be like um, of the order of often 0 0.001 percent too small. Okay. So, but depending on the input frequency this may affect uh, or may not affect. The another reason which we will talk in more detail is this. So, what we do? We do so this is my gate time. Now, I draw it with a, a larger span. So, this is the gate time or counting time and within this time. So, this is the gate signal okay. and within this time we measure the number of cycles of the input signal. Okay. Say the input signal is like this which has 1 period, 2 periods, 3 periods and uh, so this is 1, 2, 3. Say it has 3 and a half period within this time. Okay. So, starting from here to here we have 3.5 cycles, this is input right? and this is fed to the counter, but the counter cannot display you 3.5 because counter is always incremented by a factor of uh, uh, 1 by a count of 1. Okay, and say it is incremented at every uh, positive cycle or negative cycle. Okay. So, then the actual count that we will have in this case is 1 if it is negative edge uh, triggered, 2, 3 and uh, is it there or not? Okay, it is doubtful. So, let me take two cases. Let me just take two cases. One case is this, where I move the input signal towards the left a bit, okay, so that this starts from here. Therefore, this edge will also get included. Okay. So, then this edge will also get included. So, this means we will have count equal to 4. You see 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 edges are within 1 gate cycle, 1 gate time. Similarly, if I have the input signal starting from here at this point. Okay. So, this is the gate time. Then you see the 
this edge this edge is outside the gate time this edge is also outside the gate time we have three counts one two three so okay we have count equal to three okay so depending on where does this input start from with respect to this gate time on which we have no control over we can get a count of four or count of three right so when we do not have integer number of cycles within one gate time like this we have 3.5 cycles not 3 cycles, not 4 cycles, 3.5 cycles. Then the, the count, then the actual count will depend on where the input cycle starts with respect to the uh, gate time with respect to gate signal okay so this is gate signal uh, with respect to this is it starting here or is it starting here depending on that we can have four count or three counts okay and uh, therefore this will give me some error okay say this gate time say this gate time is one second for simplicity we actually have 3.5 cycles within this time so the true frequency is so actually we have 3.5 cycles implying true frequency is equal to 3.5 hertz but the count is equal to either 4 implying estimated frequency or measured frequency will be equal to 4 hertz or the count can come out to be 3 implying estimated frequency or measured frequency equal to 3 hertz in this way we can have an error so the error in this case in either cases so here also we have an error of half hertz 0.5 hertz here also we have an error of 0.5 hertz 0.5 hertz now let's take a case where say an example where the gate time is equal to one second and input frequency true input frequency is equal to say uh, 9.9 second uh, 9.9 hertz right so what will be the measure count so the count can have actually two possible values okay so the count act, uh, should be within one second it should have 9.9 .9 cycles but 9 point cycles cannot be counted we will count either nine uh, falling edges or 10 falling edges depending on where the input starts okay so the count can be either nine or it can be 10 if the count is 9 then what will be the estimated frequency or measured frequency what uh, will be our estimate we see 9 count in one second so estimated frequency is 9 hertz right in this case we see 10 counts so we will estimate the frequency to be 10 hertz and in this case how much will be the error the error will be 
0.9 hertz 0.9 hertz in this case the error will be 0.1 hertz so what can be the maximum uh, error then the even say um, the maximum error could be say when uh, you think that this is equal to 9.999 okay the true frequency is 9.999 but the count cannot be 999 count can be only 9 or 10 if it is 9 we will have a error um, estimated frequency of 9 hertz and then the error will be 0 0.999 and if the count come out, comes out to be 10 then the error will be finally uh, point, uh, 0 0.001 okay so in the worst case we see that uh, we can have a count value which is almost one greater than or less than from the expected count okay okay so in this case expected count expected count was 9.999 you can put few more nines and measured count is 9 or 10 so error in count is almost equal to 1 if it is 9 it, it can be, so at max at max okay so at max we can have a error of uh, one count similarly another example let me just modify the, it a uh, bit okay so get time say uh, 0 0.1 second and say in true input frequency is a uh, hundred point zero zero one hertz. So, how many counts do we expect in one gate time? Expected expected count in one gate cycle. is how much this is freak this uh, this is the freak uh, frequency 10.001 hertz multiply it with the time which is 0 0.1 second this is this comes out to be 10.001 this is the expected count but what will be the actual count count cannot be fraction okay so the measured count will be either 10 or 11 so how much error will we have so error in count so if it is 10 then the error is okay all very zero almost zero so let me write it's almost zero 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 one uh, so that's very small zero or or okay let me first write the true value and then i will do the approximation so this is g, uh, zero point zero zero uh, one or point nine 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 something and this too you can approximate it as almost 0 or almost 1. So, we can always have an error of 1 count. So, we can have a, an error of plus or minus one count at max okay in the previous two examples in the second example 
if the count comes out to be 11, so this is a positive error, it is like a, the measured value is more, 11 is greater than 10.001 and in the previous example, the expected value was 9.999, uh, 9 but if the value comes out to be 9, then it is a negative error, error is uh, uh, measured value is less, how much? Almost by a factor, uh, by, a, by an amount of 1. Okay. So, we can have either plus or minus 1 count at max. So, this is the error that we can encounter. And then how much error we will have in frequency measurement? So, this is error in count and error in frequency measurement will be how much? this will depend on the gate time. Okay? So, that will be plus minus 1 divided by gate time, because within one gate time, we can get one extra count or one less count. So, this is the extra frequent excess frequency measured or uh, frequent um, lack, I mean the less frequency measured. Okay? So, let us take an example. Say, uh, okay, this is also interesting. Let us take uh, input frequency equal to 10.5 hertz, okay, and we have two instruments, okay, two frequency meters one has a gate time of 1 second, another has a gate time of uh, 0 0.1 second, okay? or okay, let us take 10 second. Now, let us compare these two instruments, so two instruments, two meters this is one, this is another. In this case, how many count do we expect? Count should be equal to 10.5, in one second it should be 10.5, but actual count will be either 10 or 11. So, estimated frequency is how much? If it is 10 within once again, then the frequency is 10 hertz. If the count is 11 within once again, then it is 11 hertz. Okay? This is 11. So, error is how much? Error is uh, like 0.5 so, true frequency is, so this is 0.5 hertz. Okay. And let us see in this case. In this case, the expected count should be in 10 second, how much? This multiplied by 10, 10.5 into 10, which is 105. Okay. Uh, and the actual count, this is an integer, so it may be possible that we will get exactly this value, but we, um, but in this case actually uh, one edge may lie on the, if you go back in this diagram, if an edge lies exactly on this boundary, there is a chance of missing it. So, we may still have an error, but okay. So, let me change this example a bit to make it more clear. Let me say that this is the true frequency 10.51. So, then in this case, the count should be 10.51, but it will come out to be 10 or 11. 
So, estimated frequency will be 10 hertz or 11 hertz. So, the error will be 0 0.51 hertz or 0.49 hertz. In this case, the count should be 105.1 but the actual count will be equal to 105 or 106. So, the frequency estimated will be how much 105 now divided by 10 second because now the counting time is 10 second or 106 divided by 10 second. Okay. So, this comes out to be 10.5 hertz or 10.6 hertz. So, the error will be 0.5 hertz in this case, no in this case 0 hertz, 0 or 0.1 hertz true frequency is 10.5, here it is 10.6. Okay. So, here you see the maximum error is 0 0.1 hertz, here you see the maximum error is 0 0.5 hertz. Okay. So, in general this is more accurate, sorry less accurate. This is more accurate. So, in general, so let us take another example, say the input frequency uh, is around 10 hertz, but it is not known exactly, not known exactly, not exactly known. So, it can be 9.9, it can be 10, uh, uh, 10.1, so on but it is around 10 hertz. Now, if gate time is equal to once again, okay, then the expected count is how much? It should be 10, but actual count this can come out to be uh, one more or one less. Okay. Whether it will come more than the expected count or less than the expected count, that will depend on whether this is uh, 9.9 or 10.1, etcetera. So, we can in general have one extra count or one less count, okay. Because we, in this case, we do not know the exact frequency. So, the uh, estimated frequency is how much? This expected count plus minus 1 okay, divided by gate time. So, I can write this as expected count by gate time plus minus 1 by gate time and this is actually the error, this is the error. Okay. Similarly, if I use Okay, okay. And in this case, let me if I put the value gate time equal to once again, okay, then this will come out to be 1 by 1 second, which is plus minus 1 hertz. But if I have another instrument for which this is 0 0.1 second, then if you do this similar analysis, the error will be plus minus 1 divided by 0 0.1 second, this will be equal to huge 10 hertz. Oh, I mean the input frequency itself is 10 hertz, we can have a, a 
error of 10 hertz, I mean 100 percent error, huge. Why? Because uh, this has, I mean you just see this is one tenth of a second and this one tenth of a second we have only one cycle of the input frequency. So, we will have only one edge and we can miss that edge completely, right? And if we miss that, we will estimate the frequency to be 0. So, we will have a 100 percent error, ok. So, this is less accurate, this is more accurate. So, what can we say? We can say higher gate time means higher accuracy, that is what we have seen in previous examples. Okay. You wait for longer time and measure the number of cycles, your accuracy in frequency measurement will be higher. That may and it also depends on the input frequency. Okay. Say now let us take two, two cases uh, where I have gate time equal to 1 second. Okay, but I have two cases input frequency equal to say 10 hertz around 10 hertz and input frequency equal to around not exactly it is not known exactly it is known around 100 hertz. So, here in this case we should have a count expected count within 1 second how much 10, but true count actual count will be 10 plus minus 1. Okay. We can miss an edge, we can have an extra edge from the next or previous cycle. In this case again expected count is around 100, but actual count will be 100 plus minus 1. Okay. So, that means, how much error do we have here? We have only 1 of 1 out of 10, 10 percent error. Here we have 1 out of 100, 1 percent error. So, 10 percent error, 1 percent error. Right? So, if you if you estimate the frequency here, uh, your estimated frequency will be 9 hertz or 11 uh, hertz. Okay. So, we will have a plus minus 1. Here your estimated frequency will be 10 point uh, 1 hertz or uh, 9 point 9 hertz. So, you will have a 1 percent error. So, then another observation from this is that higher uh, uh, lower input frequency implies higher error. If the frequency of the input signal is low, Okay, in this case, then the chance of error is higher. Therefore, combining these two facts, we can write for low input frequency, we should use long gate time. Okay, why? because if the frequency is low, the error is high, but by increasing the gate time, we can increase the accuracy. So, therefore, for low input frequency, we need long gate time. This actually means, if the input frequency, if this, this is the input signal, then wait for a, a sufficiently long time, I mean do not just count this much, this many, uh, only three cycles. 
okay then there is a chance of having missing one cycle or having an extra cycle okay so this is actually one to two and half cycles so you can get one extra or one less but if you wait for long time or a longer time okay like this starting from here up to here so you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 almost 10 cycles if you miss one or get extra so you your mistake is 1 out of 10 so here 1 out of 10 error here 1 out of uh, 2.5 is the error so here more error here less error so wait for long time if the input frequency is low okay that's what you have to do but then what is the problem the problem is your measurement time will be longer okay but this will lead to slower measurement if you wait for long time your accuracy will be high but your uh, speed will be slow okay so what can we do the alternative solution is reciprocal counting which we have discussed before which is similar to measurement of frequency sorry measurement of time period instead of frequency okay so if my input signal is of low frequency so this is a low frequency input okay so this is a low frequency input then i can use a high frequency reference signal okay which is much higher of much higher frequency than this uh, input signal okay and i will have sufficient number of counts in one period because this is anyway now a long time input frequency is low and this is reference signal so i will have sufficient number of counts so i will have more counts and in more counts if i have one mistake if i have one less count or uh, more count out of many uh, counts that's not too much okay so therefore reciprocal counting is the solution okay so that's why reciprocal counting is also used it is not only used for time period measurement it is also used for frequency measurement indirectly if the low uh, if the input frequency is low and you do not want to wait for long time then use a, use the reciprocal uh, counting your error will be less you measure the time period and then take one over time period to get the frequency okay uh, thank you